Good evening and welcome to the Arlington School Committee. It is Thursday, January 8, 2015. Karen Fitzgerald's nephew, Matthew Griffin, died of cancer on December 26. He graduated Arlington High School in 2007 and Curry College in 2012. James C. Jim McLaughlin, who coached girls sports here at Arlington High School, uh, died as a result of injuries in a car accident. At this time, I would ask for a moment of silence. <coughs> Thank you. Um, if you'll notice, uh, we're a little sparse up here on the school committee. Mr. Thiel Thielman is on his way back from a meeting out of state and probably will not be with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Pierce is ill and will not be here. At this time, I would like to welcome Linda Hansen, our AEA, AEA representative. And uh, Ms. Fitzgerald, do we have any public participation? No, we do not. No, we do not. Seeing that, I will now move on to uh, Superintendent's school calendar. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hainer. Um, there, are, in your Novus, um, there are two calendars that have been presented for your consideration. Now, one of the calendars meets the criteria of our, our contractual obligations with the Arlington Educator Association, and but what is, what is of a, a concern for next year is that if you look at the calendars, you'll see that we have a very late start date. Labor Day could not be later next year. It's the 7th, which would mean that under our current um, contract, we would, students would start on Tuesday and teacher days would be the previous Wednesday and Thursday. What is also a little bit of a concern with this particular calendar, if you look at the end of the year, um, we are, the school committee is obligated, so we're all obligated to schedule a calendar that is 185 days. Five of those days can be used for snow days. Students are obliged to be in school 180 days. So when you look at that calendar, you will see that the last snow day that must be scheduled would be June 29th. Which gives us one extra day, because we cannot go past June 30th because we'd be going into another <coughs> fiscal year, and that's not possible in terms of how financing is done for salaries. It, that, that particular calendar, draft one, does meet all of our obligations. Uh, we are able to schedule 185. We are able to have the 180 days. The calendar also includes during the year uh, two Jewish holidays which fall this year on weekdays during September. Um, Easter, Sun, Easter um, Good Friday falls on a Friday. One year it was during April vacation, but that's not the case this year. And we have one professional day, which we have put on the Monday, the first Monday in November. There is no uh, general election next year. And the thought would be to, it's, it's of, the, of the possible days, it would be preferable to have it on Monday. In, in the past, we've had the professional day in a non-election year, the day after Halloween. However, Halloween next year is very nicely put on the weekend. <laughs> Lucky parents. So that, that particular calendar meets all the criteria that we must fulfill. It's just risky. And the risk is, is that um, we have one more snow day, and we will not know until the end of March whether we would have to schedule additional days. After April 1st, beginning April 1st, if you've used up all your snow days and you have more snow days or tornado days or whatever days, then you are not obliged to make them up under uh, DESE regulations. So we would not know to the end of March, which would mean that we would either have to make up days on a Saturday or during April vacation. I think from a previous survey we've done um, with teachers and with parents, the, the preference would be to go first to Saturdays. And, and actually, um, Ms. Hansen gave me a suggestion today that maybe we even designate what a Saturday might be so nobody can say later mm -hmm. they didn't know the Saturday. So that's something we, we can talk about. Um, 
But at any rate, the second draft is a calendar which does not meet our, our contract. So it would be a, a, um, a calendar that would have to be negotiated with the union. And in this particular calendar, students would start the Monday before Labor Day, but only go for four days that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, there was a, a common sense that scheduling a class on Friday before Labor Day weekend probably would not be met with much enthusiasm on anyone's part. And then the teacher days would be the previous, the week before that, on, again on Wednesday, Thursday. The, the dates actually match pretty well the dates we had this year. It's just that they don't match in terms of the relative position of Labor Day. So other than the start, everything else goes out. The nice thing about the snow days is that you end before the last week uh, of June. And you know, potentially be getting out mid-June if, no, if there were no snow days. So the, the, the purpose of tonight is to have some discussion about this. The, really, the, the calendar that we can go forward with would be the first draft and would consider tonight being a first read of that so that at the meeting on January 22nd, we can have a final vote on that part of the calendar. Mm -hmm. There are issues around early release days that are in consideration during negotiations right now and would hope to have a more, um, the more comprehensive calendar completed or brought to you in February. Um, a little earlier than we've done it in the past. But we can talk about that later. Right now, I think parents really want to know what is going to be the first day of school. I mean, that's really what they need to know. And that's why having tonight as a first read and then the vote on the 22nd, at least we can get that established. Could you just repeat the last day of school if we had four, five snow days with each of these two calendars? Um, well, you have them too. One, the first draft, which is the one that is the draft that is the primary, so meets after, our contractual after. obligations. This last snow day would be the 29th of June. If we had, um, if we were able to get four, four student days in before Labor Day, you'd push that back to the 23rd of June. Yes. 24. Twenty fourth of June? No, twenty third. Twenty third is the last one. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, I see. The twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty second. We've got a lot here. Several new drafts on it. So, okay. On mine, it's the twenty third. It's the twenty fourth. Is on here. No, it's it's a. If you scroll down the second page. Okay. Well. Do any of the members wish to comment? The starts. It's, it's the 23rd. It's the 23rd. So the, um, just to verify, uh, the contractually, teachers can start before Labor Day, but students can't? Yes, we, we negotiated that in the last contract. The last contract. Uh, Ms. Hansen did a survey uh, with teachers, which I'd like her to have a chance to tell you what some of the results were. So is it part of just sort of the perspective on this? But to answer your question, yes, we have the teachers being able to start before Labor Day, but not students. Not students, not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Want Linda to go or? Go ahead, Ms. Hanson. Hi, good evening. Thank you for letting me speak to this. So Dr. Bodhi shared these calendars with us um, a couple days ago, and we thought it would be a good idea just to send it out to the members and get a sense from them um, what their thoughts would be on it. And um, the results came up pretty interestingly. We had over 200 members weigh in on it, so it's a hot topic among the members and a very short turnaround time. Um, with the tradition, the one draft one, that's the contractual, current contractual arrangement, the traditional calendar, we had about an equal number of people who really liked it a lot and who really didn't like it a lot. Um, <laughs> so it was kind of like this bi, I'm sure there's a word for it bimodal. with charts. Bimodal, thank you, that's the word. Um, and then, and, you know, so I would say there's a slight majority for people who were less um, enthused about the traditional calendar. And then with the early bird start, the second one, which would start us a week earlier, there was a slight, there was a small, but small majority of, of teachers who were interested in it. 
but when we read through all of the comments and the executive board actually had a chance to read through everything and, and um, talk this through, our concern is just that people have made summer job plans based on the calendar that they knew about um, in the contract and uh, vacation plans in some cases, wedding plans. So um, it, it seems like there is some appetite for starting earlier and ending earlier if it's known enough in advance. And I think our concern is that even though more people are expressing an interest in starting earlier and ending earlier, the ones that don't had had reasons that they and, and plans that they made um, based on a, cal a, a different calendar. So um, I think it's a it's an interesting topic and something that people do want to you know have a lot to say about. But our concern as an association is people being able to plan for things and not have surprises. So I, th I think that's one of the concerns that we came away from this with. Ms. Starks. Oh, uh, Ms. Seuss first. Go oh, ahead, okay. Ms. Seuss. Oh, um, so uh, I have, um, I actually just had a parent contact me two weeks ago to ask me about the calendar, and I, at that time, I thought there wasn't any discussion about moving it earlier. Um, so similarly, I think parents have, some, some parents have already made plans. Um, and what I'd be cons interested in uh, is to come up with some sort of policy so that we say going forward, if Labor Day falls after the 4th of September, then we do X, and if it falls before it, we do Y. Um, uh, another parent concern, though, with the traditional calendar is that uh, camps will start that last week in June. Mm -hmm. And so right. camps start last week in June, so yes. that I know m many parents who will put a, a half tuition on a camp and mm -hmm. will end up going to the camp or, or just being in a difficult bind. Um, but again, these, th these decisions happen really early. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's frustrating how early you have to make these kind of plans, and some decisions potentially have already been made by parents. Ms. Starks. Um, two suggestions. One is I know that in Lexington, um, they already have uh, voted their 15-16, uh, and then within two months, they vote 16-17. So they are always, so parents always have an extra. So we might think about yeah. awesome. doing mm -hmm. that. And so, and that would allow us, that definitely gives people enough time. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, I think there's also the possibility, again, in Lexington, we start, teachers start on the 31st, so the week after you have people starting before Labor Day. We always start the week before Labor Day, mm -hmm. but teachers start on Monday, students start and come Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. and then Every we all go off. away for four days and then we come back the following mm -hmm. Tuesday. Right. So that would be somewhere between these two um, because you have them starting basically two weeks, teachers starting two weeks before Labor Day. Mm. Um, which I think is why it's so hard, because it really eats into the summer that way. But if you could push teachers starting to the Monday, Tuesday before Labor Day, mm -hmm. I don't know. And that would be, oh, go ahead. You want to respond as they go? Um, well, it's, just a, I'm just, it's just, just a suggestion, okay. just kind of yeah. somewhere right. between these two. Mr. Schlickman. I don't want to engage in too much of a conversation on this, is because it is subject to negotiations. Uh, Lowell starts. Uh, for kids the day, you know, the, the Tuesday before Labor Day and goes for three days. And then we back into that any of the teacher obligations, be it a returning teacher uh, on Monday and the new teachers the uh, week mm -hmm. before. And, and, and it works for us and we don't have the pressure on the snow days that we seem to have in Arlington just because we've got that earlier start. So I support going to an early bird calendar and making that a regular feature so that if we could get that negotiated through the contract that we regularly start students the Tuesday before Labor Day uh, and uh, back in our professional development before that, I think that that would relieve a lot of pressure and get us out of those last weeks of June where it's really tough being in school. Um, if we go for it for this year, I hope we do it uh, for the next school year, fiscal 16, I hope we do it quickly. And if we do this as a matter of policy, make note, I, I, Ms. Stark's idea is terrific to go and vote the calendar uh, that far in advance so we know what the, the ground rules are. 
Uh, but I'd hope that if we do it for the first time, we'd be talking about an understanding for people who have cemented, not, not just for, for, for happy reasons, but just cemented in plans that would be very difficult to break, mm -hmm. uh, give, given the constraints of a new calendar. And that, that's, that's all I'm willing to say because we're in the negotiations. Yes. Um, I have the same concerns about, as Mr. Schlickman, about how we can discuss this if it's a matter of negotiations. Mm -hmm. I've also been contacted by several parents and I've said, well, this is what we've done traditionally, but it's up to negotiations and we're in negotiations now. So um, if we were to seriously consider this for the coming year, um, I would like to see us consider doing a quick parent survey um, as, was this, as was done with the teachers. Um, I think it would be a good thing to, I would like to have that information, not just the random people who have contacted me, but just to send something out and, and also to collect information about why people, as your comments did, why people are suggesting the option that they favor, um, because I think that would inform us for future mm -hmm. planning. Um, so I'm not really sure where we go from here. First off. For us to get a certain, let me begin with uh, Ms. Seuss saying, I, a policy would be great. I think it would, if we could work out some sort of formula for the future, it would have to be in conjunction with the AEA, okay. uh, working together on that as part of it. That's one piece. The other piece, surveys, uh, the union has the right to survey their people at any time. We have the right to, to survey, but I need to say this in public. Any results of that survey will not be discussed openly until negotiations have been completed. Uh, we, we have the right to be informed, but we do not have the right during negotiations to bring public pressure on the union, nor do they have with us. Mm -hmm. As was stated the last time, and I appreciate Ms. Hansen, uh, there was more that I think the union wanted to say the last time, but recognizing the restraints of negotiations did not, and I appreciate that, as we as ourselves. Um, are you looking, you're not looking for a vote tonight, am I correct? This is a first read first discussion. Read. Okay, first and read. are you looking for a first, yeah, a first read for, on, on both or <coughs> a, a oh, particular the, one? Uh, it would have to be on the calendar that uh, is our traditional calendar. Uh, the other one it was brought out here to bring up the issues and it, it is a matter of negotiations. <coughs> And Ms. Hansen, when she did the survey, didn't ask them to pick between the two. Right. It's I more a that. sentiment of, of where, it would, where it would be. Right. I, I totally agree that it would be a great idea to bring this up in negotiations because I think <coughs> everybody's, everybody has uh, some interest in how we're going to do this. Right. And as weather becomes more uncertain, it does create a lot of pressure. Um, within the town, within the district, with people's lives to be always getting so close to the 30th of June. So I think that would be a proper thing. Now, it, it was far as the, the, just so you're aware and the people who are listening are aware, part of our um, contract also has two teacher days. So if you have students start the Tuesday, it would mean that the teachers would have, unless we change that, would have to be in the previous week as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things we did consider was a calendar like that and then didn't do it because it only allowed two, two student days that week. It's like, right. was that worth it? Yeah. I, I, so at any rate, that's where we are. These are the issues. It's going to be the case for a couple of years. <coughs> um, and uh, this next year we, we could have gone to the 30th, but next year is a leap year. So we pick up a day, and so that's helpful. And then there's, of course, the issue that we've all, the road we've been down before, and that is religious holidays. So that might be something down the road we need to think about as well. So it, it may be that this point, that it's January, and while it seems like we're being very proactive this January, in fact, for people's lives, it's not. You, you really do have to plan out. I would have you consider the traditional calendar is the first read tonight um, as we go forward. And I do appreciate that suggestion of maybe picking out a Saturday or two that uh, we red circle because saying if we, if we need it, the plan on this is where you're going to need to be. Um, 
I do want to amend that that was a recommendation by a member. That wasn't necessarily my <laughs> recommendation. So I just I, want to I, say it might be a good idea, a but idea. I don't want to say that I want to take credit for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We all set? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll consider uh, first read on the traditional calendar. Okay, moving on. Superintendents. The, because we're starting a uh, after uh, just a few days after the start of school, they really don't have anything except that. Um, last night was our, our first uh, brush with the issue of snow days, cold days. <laughs> cold days. Yeah. And, uh, but one thing I do want to reiterate, and I'll probably have to say this again at other points, is that when we have these kinds of days, you know, I have to make the decision for the district. And it's every, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that go into considering this and paramount of course is the safety and the readiness of the schools um, to be prepared for students and staff um, but parents should know that if they feel that there's their child cannot walk to school whether the snow or cold that is their prerogative to call and say I'm sorry that they, they, they can't come because of weather conditions and that will be an absence but it will be an excused absence and I've mentioned this repeatedly in years before, but I think it's worth mentioning it again. And probably in the email last night, I should have said it, and I thought about it after, and I said, I forgot to put that in after I sent it. Um, but I, I can tell you that all went very well today. Uh, furnaces were on, the buildings were warm, buses went well, and I appreciated the, uh, the director of transportation sending the sixth grade bus to Thompson early so that when the children arrived they could get on a warm bus rather than have to stand out there and wait. So th there were a lot of little things that people did to make it um, a much um, easier day. But I was at one elementary school today and things were going just fine. And uh, the building was quite warm as it was here. So hopefully we don't have more of these days but I'm sure that it's only early January this isn't the last time. So that, that's it. This time I'll be doing the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion, discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant number 15083, dated 12-18-2014, in the amount of $618,826.54. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Setting a new record, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, subcommittee, uh, policies and procedure. Mr. Pierce is not here at the time. Is there any other member of that group that has anything to share? No. no. Okay. Budget, Ms. Starks. Uh, let's see. I was excited to get the uh, request to participate in the survey of school districts serving non-resident homeless <coughs> students. <coughs> Um, I was excited, I'm optimistic that they, uh, so they asked the 55 communities that were affected uh, to just give them some information. <coughs> They're trying to actually, hopefully, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> at least they'll know how much people spend on it, whether or not they have any money to throw at the problem. Um, but I thought that that was uh, exciting and I was glad to hear that we were gonna uh, take part in that. Um, and also, uh, everyone also saw that the SOI for schools opens this Friday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here's hoping second time's a charm. Amen. Go AHS. Yeah. Um, and uh, right now we currently have no budget subcommittee meeting planned. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Dr. Bodie? It does. It, it opens this week and it closes the same time as it did last year. Um, what was interesting in the letter is that we must go through the same process as we did before. So I, um, the town manager and I have talked about this and we will be scheduling uh, the necessary votes but before that happens I, I think we did a really good job on the SOI with respect mm -hmm. to the building plant last year and we might do some tweaking on that but the big issue is we're going to update it in terms of enrollment our enrollment increases and projections have changed mm -hmm. since last year and so what we will be doing that and probably trying to schedule a vote here maybe early February and then scheduling the, the Board of Selectmen. But that, it still has to go through the same right. approval process. The other thing that was in the letter that, that we'll have to think about is 
uh, you have to fix you have to pick your priority SOI mm -hmm. and that includes even uh, SOIs with regard to major repairs mm -hmm. so tonight uh, the capital committee is voting on the capital plan uh, uh, recommendations for next year which includes the Stratton mm -hmm. uh, funding and of course one of our hopes would be to submit to the to the MSBA uh, as we did before uh, uh, an SOI and some of the major repairs but we're gonna have to think about this strategically because we, we're just sort of looking into it. I just wanted to alert you to that's an issue mm -hmm. and d I can't tell you exactly what we're gonna do yet yeah. can you clarify I'm sorry go ahead go ahead can you clarify about this does this mean that we cannot also submit for repairs and for the high school or that we have to say this one's our priority that's right we can submit but then we have still have to identify which is a priority okay so we're gonna clarify that with MSBA just to make sure but it seemed pretty clear in the letter actually I I'm a little bit confused we're not looking for MSBA money for Stratton now possibly we? yes we oh, talked about that okay, at the okay, Stratton, yeah, okay. we did. I misunderstood. Um, uh, I'd just like to uh, apologize. Ms. Johnson is currently at the Capital Planning. This is, <laughs> and she was there at the last time. That's why she came in. It, it seemed late. She's doing double duty tonight, and I didn't, I don't want the public to misunderstand that. Okay. Uh, we all set with that? Uh, community relations, Mr. Schlickman. We have a meeting scheduled for later this month. Um, Two things uh, that I'd also like to bring up is that in the Arlington email list discussion of the to close, to delay, or to open at the regular time, which I think we did the right thing, uh, there was the usual discussion of the unreliability of the MBTA bus service coming up towards the Odyssey and the high school, and that kids are waiting for two or three buses that are full and they pass them by. And I know that this was an issue in the past, and we had Representative Garbley uh, working on that. Um, if this is continuing to be a problem, I would hope that we could collect data and involve the good representative again in terms of making sure that we have adequate bus service for our kids who are relying on the MBTA to come to Odyssey and into the high school. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you think that that should wander back to the subcommittee or should be just handled administratively uh, I will follow up on that okay and if you need anything from the subcommittee uh, the other thing is is that uh, the delegate assembly the MA, uh, MASC delegate assembly uh, passed uh, the resolution that we co-sponsored regarding um, unfunded mandate legislation and uh, MASC is preparing to, uh, legislation uh, to correspond to the votes of the delegate assembly and we've got a request from MASC to uh, ask uh, Representative Garbley to sponsor legislation on unfunded ma mandates and fingerprints so that uh, for any of us who have the opportunity to talk to Representative Garbley a kind request for him to be a primary sponsor for this would be uh, would be appropriate and that's what I have great should we ask the chair to have an official discussion with him or or, or um, authorize him well well I, I think that uh, as individual members we can certainly ask our representative to do this the I, I got an, uh, an email from Steve Finnegan who is the legal counsel of MASC asking me to contact uh, the good representative and I'm happy to do that but uh, I do have more than one of us doing that as well in our uh, capacities as constituents who are also members of the committee. It's certainly appropriate. We can do it as individuals, and if the body so agrees, I'll do it officially. I move that we request the chair to do, make an official request. Second it. Any <laughs> further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Anything else, Mr. Schlickman? That's it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> curriculum instruction and assessment and accountability. We are still gathering data. We'll be scheduling our meeting after we've finished. Great. Uh, facilities uh, will be meeting on the 22nd at 5 p.m. in this room. Uh, and special study group and superintendents will be meeting on the 26th uh, at 5 o'clock in this room. Um, the chair uh, this afternoon uh, 
after promising the superintendent I wouldn't speak, but I did speak a couple of times, uh, had a chance to uh, see the demonstration on a piece of software that uh, I was really excited about and like that, and maybe I shouldn't have talked about it. So, <laughs> never mind. Not yet. Thank you. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, does any, do any of the members have any announcements? Um, I just, I still want to know what the agenda is for the. Okay, uh, yeah. since since for we we are scheduled for a retreat on Saturday, I think the. What was it? The twenty. 24th. 24th. Uh, it, in that right now, more than one member will not be able to attend, uh, and I've spoken to the superintendent. We're going to send out a doodle to see if we can do this before a regular scheduled meeting in an executive session. So that will be for, so right now the 24th is being canceled, okay, uh, for that uh, retreat, and uh, we will have a doodle out, and I apologize for not getting back to people on time uh, so that schedules didn't get rearranged. Does that help? Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, there, let's see. There is scheduled a joint subcommittee and human rights commission uh, committee, and I apologize. I do not, ha I didn't write down the date. Do you, do you have it, Ms. Seuss? Dr. Seuss? Is it January 15th? That sounds, I think that's it. Yes. Okay, on January 15th in this room. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, you'll get the. Uh, <coughs> we we have the date in agreement, uh, and Karen's going to send out the date. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but I said schedule. I'm not sure if it was the 29th. Uh, something like that. Thir the last Thursday in January at 5:30 p.m. It's the 29th. We all set. 29th. Yeah. Again, no other announcements from members of the committee at this time. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we will be entering an executive session to d discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect thereto, to conduct strategy, strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union, in which if held in an open session meeting may have a detrimental effect. To conduct this strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which, if held in an open meeting, may have a detrimental effect. Um, we will not, we will be adjourning, uh, we will come back into open session for only the purpose of adjourning. I need a roll call vote at this time. A motion to go into executive session. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote. Uh, yes. 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 Aye. Aye.